Hi, everybody. It's WAPI Webinars again, and with you, Alexander Friedman, and my wonderful guest, Jana Krekic. Hi, Jana. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for very much for being again with me. I love our webinars very much, and I was very happy when I found out that we will have a webinar together with you again. <laughs> So of course. I'm sure it will be as wonderful as all the previous ones. Thank you so much. So for everybody who sees Jana for the first time, Jana is a certified translator, international speaker, an e-commerce consultant, and also the founder of Seven Figure Amazon dedicated translation agency, ELT Translations. Everything right? YLT, but it's fine. Y YLT. I, yeah. I, I said I, I, I You said ELT or something ELT. like that. Okay. Yeah. It's, 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 why? 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 L yeah. T. Yes. Right. Everybody, you can see down the video, you, you can see the right name. It is written there. <laughs> so uh, tell me, how are you? Since our previous webinar passed some time, uh, now uh, everybody is saying that it is recession in Europe. So how mm -hmm. e-commerce is doing? Well, I'm I'm lucky that we have a lot of U.S. clients too. So um, I mean, you can definitely feel the recession, uh, and it's definitely going to get worse. <laughs> and now we're just about you know like a couple of hours past Prime Day, which has been good for some, not 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 that great for others. But uh, I still think that the things are um, not that bad as I think that they will they will be. But as in every recession, as you have a lot of people that will be winners. Uh, so let's see how that unfolds. Yeah. Do you already see uh, the winning path for for e-com sellers? Not really, not yet. But I'll <laughs> let you know. <laughs> Okay, because uh, in general, we also see the uh, decrease of the sales volume, uh, like almost with all the clients. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What I, what, I, what I really would recommend, let's say if you're a service provider, at least like that's what we do, we kind of stick more to uh, multi-brands like bigger brands that we work with uh, than um, Amazon sellers because um, Amazon sellers are going to cut expenses a lot, uh, you know, PPC, anybody else who's managing whatever for them, they're probably going to be the first on, on top of their list or like uh, cutting expenses. Um, mm -hmm. But bigger brands will not cut you off that hard. I mean, of course, it's, it takes a lot longer time um, to get a deal with a bigger brand, but they're, they're probably... Um, better solution to work with at this point than with Amazon sellers. Less clients, but bigger clients. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because the biggest one in the recession, they always try to eat all the all the rest, all the small ones. That as well. Yeah, <laughs> that as well. So, yeah, the okay. strongest will prevail as always. So, that's a good that's a good strategy. <laughs> Okay, for today, our topic is how to beat your competitors on international marketplaces, right? Yes, that's and, correct. And Jana has prepared for us something special again. So yeah. I would like you to start sharing your screen, the presentation, and please, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, today my topic will be how to beat competitors on international marketplaces. And I will be talking today about a couple of very important things. And uh, especially like nowadays, we're talking about recession, you know, like maybe you don't, you're not happy with how things are uh, working out on your home marketplace. Maybe you're a US seller, UK seller, German seller. That's where the majority of our clients come from. And maybe you can find other marketplaces where your products could be potentially more successful than what they already are. And um, I'm going to talk about um, localization, what's very important, how to get good content, and of course, keywords. This is also how you can beat your competitors in international marketplaces. And how? That's because a lot of um, sellers who are extremely big, it could be seven, eight figure sellers, they really don't know what they're doing on international marketplaces and they don't concern content to be as important, which leads to bigger failures after five or six months. 
So let's begin with international marketplaces and the marketplaces you can focus on. So this is the overview of the marketplaces that we have right now. And from what we found out is that um, by the end of 2023, beginning of, beginning of 2024, there are gonna be other new marketplaces that Amazon is gonna step in uh, into. And th those are gonna be uh, Chile, it's going to be Colombia, it's going to be Nigeria, South Africa Republic, and Belgium. Belgium is probably going to be the, the next um, marketplace, which is going to be very interesting, because if you already have the Dutch translations for the Netherlands, you can also use them for Belgium. Just probably going to use like different optimization, different keywords. So these are the top marketplaces where you can focus on right now. And a lot of people ask me like, so where, where should I, you know, like what is the next marketplace for me? It really depends on where your starting point is. So if you're a US seller, it's okay to focus on Mexico and Canada. And now after Amazon opens in uh, more than South America, definitely on those. But if you wanna go overseas, I would say Germany is always the best one because it is the biggest one after the US for now. And of course, Japan has a lot of like really big potential. But what's really interesting, and if you have like a US uh, listings and English content, Amazon UAE could be potentially interesting. And we have seen uh, growth, uh, certain growth in this marketplace um, because you don't need to translate unless you don't wanna target expats, which I don't recommend. I always recommend uh, targeting expats in UAE. Um, and also, if you're selling in home decor category, this decor category is not saturated as it is on other marketplaces. And there's still a lot of potential for your product um, to sell in this category. It's very, it's one of the pop, most popular products because expats over there, they uh, rent empty apartments, they need furnishings, and it's an expensive country to buy furnishings in. So if we can offer good pricing, uh, I'm sure it can be successful dominant, dominant in this category. And this is not that much well-known fact still. So if you're selling in home decor, Amazon UAE is the, the, might be the marketplace for you. And what I would suggest is like doing the keyword research for the US marketplace, not the UK, because also because of the cultural ties and everything else, um, people will be searching for sim similar to what they use uh, search for in the US marketplace. Uh, Amazon Sweden has been growing, uh, but we still haven't seen a lot of sales of this marketplace. I'm expecting it to start booming next year uh, when Amazon focuses more on it because the Netherlands has been an underdog and bold.nl has been dominant marketplace. But ever since the beginning of 2022, Amazon started focusing a lot on the Dutch marketplace and now it has surpassed bold and is the dominant marketplace. So Amazon that is CSE is on a lookout could potentially be good. In Poland, I'm expecting great things from Poland, even though, as I said, people are still not getting a lot of sales, but it is the, the country which has 12,000 online stores in Poland in one of the top uh, marketplaces right next to Shopee and Tmall, which is the, the world's dominant uh, marketplaces. Also Zalando, uh, famous marketplace. They've also expanded to uh, Poland and Sweden and Spain last year. So, and others are following the same, same example. So I think that there's probably potential also why Amazon decided to do that as well. Um, also, if you have Shopify web stores, um, it's also uh, strongly encouraged to, um, to expand to other marketplaces, especially if you're selling in Europe, because less than 50% of Europe speaks English. And you'll be targeting every other or every other, every third consumer, basically, instead of every single consumer. So it's strongly recommended to um, get your content in order and to try to expand on international marketplaces. And this is like during the recession. This is also one of the things that sellers are trying more and more as we've seen increase in international expansion demand. Um, Amazon Turkey has also been on the rise. We've, we've got a lot of requests for Amazon Turkey in the last couple of months. And what's really interesting is that if you're in kitchenware category, don't go to Turkey because out of some reasons, that category doesn't work well on Amazon um, Turkey as well. Also, you want to focus on YouTube influencers and not on, um, you don't want to focus on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Instagram is in this country as well. 
So million dollar question, will my product work on the new marketplace? This is, you know, really uh, something that everybody wants to know. And we're basically developing a report. We will sum, sum up all of the things that could tell you if this is going to work or not, which will soon be ready. And I'm really excited to see the results of that. But potential opportunities for a product can be really easily accessible. For instance, if you go to um, the brand um, analytics inside of your seller's um, account, I don't, I don't think a lot of sellers do this. But if you are selling, let's say, like uh, outdoor lights, the solar, solar string lights outdoor, the search frequency um, rank in the US is 600, 630, which is okay. But if you compare it to the UK, the search frequency rank is 14. So that means that this product will be better sold in the UK marketplace than in the US. Um, also, when compared to Germany, the first one, the Lichter Captain, it's 7,000, I don't know, search, search, search frequency rank. So this is probably the signal for you not to go to the German marketplace, even though it is the biggest marketplace, but there's obviously no demand for this product as it is, let's say, on the UK marketplace. And in this case, then you would definitely go to UK marketplace and not to Germany. Also, Paw Patrol toys, we all know these toys, but they're doing insanely well in the UK and Germany. They're not doing great uh, in the US marketplace. So if you're like, you know, if you think you cannot do any better in the US and which is probably true with this product, then you can have like tons of other potential uh, discoveries on other marketplaces, which could potentially make your product a winning, winning one. Also very interesting, um, uh, you should also um, discover a little bit about the country and the, the marketplace, the, the, the audience. Um, you can also use the black box, the Helium 10 to do that, to see the revenue of the product. But what's very interesting is that um, last year, like last summer, this portable air conditioners caught my eye because uh, in the US, the, the search frequency rank was about like 900, which doesn't make it a, a best-selling product, but in Germany, the Klimaanlage, the portable Klimaanlage was sixth. And there's a very good explanation why this was a popular product. And that was because in Germany, they don't have ACs installed in the buildings, in their, um, in, in their, in their houses, because the climate used to be much more colder than it is right now. So people are now reaching to buy a product that could help them cool off. And that comes in the form of a AC, which is portable, which you can take with you. So this is a very, very popular product, and this could be a potentially very big win for you if you're into these into this um, category. And also, like you know, this is like the top search terms for Valentine's around um, in February this year. Which, like in the U.S., you can see that the Valentine's is dominating the category. Um, and uh, air fryer and headphones, but on the Japanese marketplace, you can see that you have like tons of like anime, um, you have Dragon Balls, and you have also like this product, like this is a fantastic product selling good on Japanese marketplace. And you can just see like how, how many different things. It was just a bag? Just a bag with these. Uh, this meant, this is like a holiday in Japan. It meant something, I don't know what, um, I honestly forgot what it's meant, but it had like a sign, which was, uh, it was like a holiday. It was a holiday for them and it was like popular with them, but it was had nothing to do with the Valentine's uh, day, for instance. And it's also like very important if you want to like optimize the keywords. So if you optimize the keywords, like on Japanese marketplace for Valentine's day, you would not get any like hits, you know? So that's also what's very important. And also the same day, and say, say around the same day, um, the, the German, um, uh, report said electric installations, sportswear, and diamond paintings were one of the top popular items. So there was also no sign of Valentine's Day as well. Um, basically, you just need to do a little bit of research, like your VA can do this for you, and then you can get like an idea of like, okay, is it worth for me to get like the, the product here or there, or what should I do? But every marketplace is different. That's what I'm saying. And don't don't be like, OK, I'm going to go to UK because I have English content already. I just launched it there. Don't do it because you're going to waste time and money because not every product is fit for every other marketplace um, out there. And also like talking about the, these like different um, um, <clears throat> search terms 
what's really important, what's also very trending is use influencers like UGC, um, UGC Marketplace. Um, also, what's very trending is TikTok, of course, except as I said, Turkey. Uh, what's very important when it comes to TikTok, like um, you can have an influencer that costs less than an Instagram influencer that has um, more number of followers because it's like very easy to get TikTok followers, it's still easy to get TikTok followers versus Instagram. And you don't have to pay 500 euros for a post. You can pay a lot less for that. So, you know, basically you just have to um, check the, that country, the, the content, the, the type of audience that you have and see, let's say if uh, TikTok, it's a mis common misconception that TikTok is only for kids. Um, according to TikTok's um, official numbers, um, their audience is in range between 18 and 35 years old. This is their dominant audience. So let's say if you're selling any type of product that's not for senior citizens, I'd say that you should go to TikTok influencers in each country and then see what they're using, using different hashtags and how to use them. It's very easy. Um, you can also use the, um, uh, the official marketplace on uh, TikTok where they offer um, hashtags and influencers. And what's really uh, interesting is that uh, you have different type of influencers on TikTok, like nano, micro, whatever. Like nano influencers are the ones that have a thousand plus uh, audience. Uh, micro are the ones that have like 10,000 plus um, audience. And um, you don't have to go to the ones that have like two billions or half a billion, because maybe the ones are going to be more expensive. But what's very important is like to find someone that's like, anywhere between like five and 10,000 and they could easily like um, just do posting because they would love your product or they can do like ridiculously low amounts of uh, money that they, they would have to spend on on their posts and on their videos. So I also mentioned here a couple of free sites that use influencers like TikTok Spy, TalkFluence, a Spiral, and of course TikTok Marketplace. And this is common for every country because those um, hashtags can do a lot of great things for your product. This is just talking about um, the influencers and the influencer marketing. And also, like, why is UGC so important right now? Is because if an influencer says my, your, that the product from your brand is amazing, people will listen to it more than if you said that so on your web page or somewhere on on your on your website or your Shopify. So influencers are your next big weapon when it comes to a brand. Also on on international marketplaces. The diamond painting that we saw in Germany being a dominant um, uh, keyword is also one of the dominant things on TikTok. And it's very important because TikTok now also dictates trends. And I remember there was like, a, uh, there was a, a DIY thing where you take your um, um, socks and then you make it make a make a bra or like a sports bra or like a crop top out of them and then also that term of like crop top from blah 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 there was also trending on amazon i think it was like two years ago so don't underestimate the power of tiktok and do also look a couple lots of research um over there hire a va that's like you know, um, in, interesting in TikTok. That's all you need um, for someone to do a, a good job on that. And that leads me to localization. I've really mentioned this a little bit, you know, like having content to um, be adjusted to different marketplaces. And, um, you know, there's like tons of like really good stories, like what works on one marketplace doesn't work on another. It doesn't matter how successful you are. And this is why I'm like also saying that a lot of very big U.S. sellers are not successful in international marketplaces because they underestimate the power of content. Um, you know, one of the examples is McDonald's not being in Vietnam, like anywhere. There's no McDonald's in Vietnam because people over there, they pr pr prefer their homemade locally produced uh, food. And McDonald's just kind of failed because it was not a good marketplace for them because they're, they're literally people in Vietnam dislike junk food and McDonald's was just like, oh, we're just going to conquer this marketplace because we're McDonald's. Well, guess what? Even McDonald's would not um, um, survive on marketplaces where the audience doesn't like their products or where big 
brands don't want to adjust uh, to the, the, the target marketplace. And you can adjust with content and with localization because this is how you're going to present your brand and tell your story, uh, storytelling as being a very important thing, conveying the right message. Like we have one of the products that I like to talk about was this pasta. So the original text was pasta like in Bella Italia. So when you present this to Americans or like UK or anywhere else where people speak um, English, you want to understand what Bella Italia means. It means that it's going to be something that gives you the, the genuine taste of Italy. But this seller wanted to sell this product in Italy to Italians, right? So, you know, it's how do you sell ice to Eskimos? Basically, you cannot use the word Bella Italia in Italy because it'll be just like, well, like Bella Italia, like we don't understand that. So we have to change it and adjust it to um, fresh pasta like your your grandma, like your nonna used to make. And then they'll be like, oh, it's like homemade. It's like something that will remind me of my childhood of like good quality ingredients, great food. And this is what will click with the Italian audience. And this is what you should also do. You know, like if you want to like, you know, like use it, um, a product you're going to sell to Germans, you're not going to be like all like sweet talking and metaphorically speaking and just using like a bunch of like sweet talking, pampering style. It's hated. They want to know the benefits of the products pretty much like straight to business, black and white in most of the cases, and don't try to upsell their product and sell it to them. They will be the judge if your product is good or not. That's very important. Um, also localization, which means that if you have like phrases or idioms in one language, don't translate them literally as they are to other language. Uh, a lot of times you would not even notice that you're doing that. But for instance, like this example of the bonsai tree kit, one of the bullets says you don't need green fingers. So if you would translate this to German, uh, you would get the translation grüne finger. This is like the green finger. And uh, you would literally mean that you, you, will, you will have green fingers from this kit, which will probably in German's mind be like, oh, well, I don't want to like paint my, my fingers green. This kid probably has a problem with the color or it's not that good of like a, um, the, the, the color or it's not that high quality because you will translate this to German. It's, it should be called, you're gonna have, you don't need green thumbs. Because that means that you're good in agriculture. It means that you can grow plants. You're very successful, which you're going to have a beautiful garden. So you would just have to pay attention to that. And a lot of people that use Google Translate and a lot of sellers that use just literal translations of any sort of like machine tools, they're, they're doing these mistakes over and over. And this is how you confuse your audience. And maybe someone will be like, no, I don't, I don't think this is a good product. I think it's something shady about this product. I'm gonna go and buy the, the competitor's product. So you always have to be very, really um, uh, careful with that. We've also been testing a couple of AI um, uh, tools and uh, they're still not good enough. They're getting there, but you know what? When you put like the English text in the AI tool, they will give you a translation, like I'm putting it under like quote unquote marks because they don't stick to the text. They just like do a very free um, text creation. So you're gonna lose a lot of very valuable data that you have in your text because it doesn't do a good of a job of sticking to the original text where it, where it has to. And now to the main point about keywords and localization. So I've no, I've mentioned that a lot of sellers want to go from the U.S. They want to go to the U.K. and then they're just like, oh, it's a U.K. marketplace, and I want to do it like because it's the same content and it's the same keywords. Well, it's not, and you can get in a big trouble with that. And we've had sellers that just didn't do their research, and they would just do the same content in both countries, and they would get ranked for wrong uh, keywords. Uh, like diaper bag, uh, this is my um, product for, from, uh, from the example, but we've had actually a, a seller that sold diapers, like kids diapers, and uh, they just copied that for the UK, and in UK, diapers are for adults, that's the term used for adult diapers, so they were ranked for completely wrong keywords, and they spend a lot of, you know, um, money and time and everything just to understand that they were ranked for the wrong word because they used the wrong keyword and whatever you do just have to do the research on each marketplace um, separately so if we take for instance like this diaper bag 
this is like what you get in the US. Um, this is, these are the list of keywords that you want to have in your listing. Diaper bag, um, diaper bag, backpack, uh, backpack, baby diaper bag, blah, blah. So in the orange uh, color, you have the localized keywords, baby shower gifts, pañaleras para bebe niña. Of course, you're going to have Spanish keywords because the U.S., the major population is um, a, a major minority are Hispanic, uh, is Hispanic population. That's why you're going to have a lot of Spanish keywords, which I absolutely encourage to use in backend. Uh, also diaper bag with changing station. So if you want to like take a look at these keywords and you want to use them in your UK uh, listing, you will be doing absolutely uh, wrong thing because Let's take a look at the UK listings. So the number one search term diaper bag in the US, it's not top search term for diaper bag, in, not top search term in the US, because this product is called changing bag in the UK, not the diaper bag. It has 16,000 search volume versus 2,500 the diaper bag does. Also nappy, this is also the name for diapers, nappy, nappy changing bag, which you don't have in the US. Nappy changing backpacks, uh, baby bags for prams, that prams of strolls. You don't have the word, like you have, you don't have strolls anywhere in the US marketplace. Also, you don't have the changing station because it's very typical for the US. Also baby shower gifts are obviously not that um, often in the UK. So you get a completely different list of keywords um, that you'll be missing out on and you'll be completely you know, using the ones that are not even ranked in the UK. Now, if we take a look, uh, just show you an example of diapers in the US and then nappies in the UK. And then if we take a look at the uh, German marketplace, uh, the word we need for this is Wickeltasche, which is the basic, basically diaper bag. We have the diaper rucksack. We have the di diaper rucksack big. That's the line 436. We don't have any sizes in any of the other previous countries. We have the baby bag and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty, pretty different depending on different um, uh, marketplaces. Uh, also, it's very important if you want to use a baby tasha um, in, the, in the helium 10 or any other words that like um, consist of two words, um, for the German marketplace, you have to adjust the word count to number one in order to get those big compound words that we have in Germany. Because if you don't adjust the word count to number one, you are just going to have like two separate keywords as the they, they, they build a majority of uh, long tail keywords in other languages, but not in German. So you need word count set as number two, then you do the research, and then you go back and do word count number one. So you get all the big compound keywords. Now, let's take a look at the competitors and how well or bad they're doing on German marketplace. As I said, I've done tons of research, tons of analysis, and even if like the highest competitive categories, there are always ways how you can beat your competitors talking about SEO and keywords, because a lot of big sellers, they, they don't care about content. And in six months, when your you know, sales start to drop, it's probably going to be your content that's going to be the one to blame because you didn't pay attention to it. What a lot of sellers do is like they repeat keywords, they use you know same keywords, a lot of different um, uh, throughout the whole listing. Um, they don't use them smartly and they just basically use one or two top keywords everywhere. Like Ruvalina is like one of the, the top competitors in the German marketplace for the baby diaper bag. As you can see, they, they're doing a great job in the title, but then throughout the whole listing, they had the Wickel Rucksack, Wickel Rucksack, they have like two or three times, um, Wickel auf Lauge again. So they're just repeating the, the keywords and this could be you with new keywords that they're not using. So if we compare all the competitors, from what we've seen, five out of five competitors are ranked for the broad keyword, Wickeltasche Rucksack, which means they either have Wickeltasche or Rucksack somewhere inside of their listing, which is too broad. Because if you just say like a Rucksack, like what are the odds that people want to buy like a baby butt diaper Rucksack, right? And only two out of the 15 competitors are ranked for the exact of the Wickeltasche Rucksack somewhere in their um, in their uh, product. Uh, this is going to be the Mofut and Leke baby, Wickeltasche uh, Gross and then Wickeltasche Gross here. So they are having these two keywords in their title. 
And basically, um, none of them are having this keyword in bullets. So what you could, for instance, do is like you could put the, this um, keyword in your first bullet um, because maybe this is not, you know, something that you want to put in your title. Maybe you want to keep it like super short. Maybe you want to get ranked for only like two most important um, keywords, but then I would definitely put it in your first uh, bullet and definitely try to keep your bullets between 150 to 200 characters. So, because you could like use the title and bullets to be 1000 characters uh, limit and to, to fit into that limit. So you could get most of them uh, ranked. Also, Wickeldasche uh, Kinderwagen. This is also pretty interesting. If your product is a uh, diaper bag stroller, so it can fit into your stroller or you can like somehow like put it on so it hangs on it, whatever. This is a really good keyword for you because none of the 15 competitors are ranked for the exact keyword anywhere in the listing. So this is literally like blue ocean for you. You can use it in the title. You can use it in the bullet. Um, and you will be the only one that's ranked for it. So just imagine the, the ranking juice you'll be having for um, keyword like that. And there's like tons of other examples like that. And for each and every category, I could find at least one keyword that could be a potential good fit for your, for your product and that you could be using and none of your competitors have been using. We've been testing out a tool called uh, Data Dive. And I strongly suggest you to use it. You still have to have Helium 10 in order to use it. It's like an add-on, but it gives you an overview of your competitors and the titles and bullets that they've been using and what keywords are in the title, what keywords are in the bullet, and where are your opportunities to fit in and what are they missing up. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for uh, listening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If you guys uh, need a... Um, consultation. I'm happy to hop on a call. And we offer a free audit on all of the listings that you already got um, you know, done or translated. They're not performing well. We'll be happy to do an audit on several pages and point out to the low hanging fruit and tell you how to improve it. So thank you again for listening. And I hope you enjoyed my talk today. It's wonderful as always. Thank you, Yana. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, I'm sure uh, if you will send to Yana your question and right there that you watch the Wapi webinar, probably you will get some discount from Yana. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> we're offering they're offering better pricing for all of the Wapi uh, webinars audience as, as always. Just reach out and we'll we will uh, make it happen. Wonderful. So as I understood you, you the, the last topic about the keywords, you're saying that almost in any situation with any competitors, you can find a keyword strategy to be outstanding from the competitors, right? Yes, almost in every niche. Like some, some niches are very difficult because you would have three or four competitors that are doing a really great job, like a really great job. But that's like maybe like five, six percent. Literally in all of the other niches that we've been doing, we could find keywords that not, no, not, none of those competitors are ranked for that are highly relevant for your, for your product. I'm not talking about you know uh, selling a travel mug and then using the keywords such as travel mug kids because maybe you don't want to be ranked as kids product, right? I'm talking about like some really good keywords that are highly relevant for your product. Um, and then you know if if also like um, if you have travel mug kids that nobody none of your competitors are using then i would put that in in back ends for your product and you won't be you know like ranked for that like in front end but from all the other competitors maybe also that would be interesting for kids as well but you would not be put in a category that's for kids only so uh, that's also good but there's like tons of like really good strategy and we've been testing out a lot of different uh tools and strategies the past couple of months but uh, we've been the most satisfied with, as I said, like Helium 10 plus Data Dive. Of course, it depends on the, on the marketplace. Sometimes the results are not going to be great because you don't have a lot of competitors. Let's say Italy, like a very small marketplace, you can't expect that high quality keywords as you would get for the US or UK. But there are always some strategies you can use. And you can always dig out something. As I said, if the content is not written in English, I'm pretty much sure uh, in 95% of the cases, you can find something how you can beat the competitors on SEO level with keywords. Okay. So, and tell me, please, 
uh, as we already discussed in recession, everybody is cutting the budgets. Yeah. And so now it, it becomes more difficult because with money, you, you, you can do a lot. But uh, when you have a little money, it, it becomes much difficult, much more difficult. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. would you suggest, uh, like what mistakes not to do, not to spend too much budget and what strategy to, to, to choose to save my, your budget and go more careful now? Um, like how, what what uh, promotion strategy to choose when, when your budget is cut into? I don't know, but I would definitely say like do not cut on PPC because I think that will be a mistake. Uh, I think you should adjust your budgets, but not, not like go like literally like super, not decrease them immensely. Also, the algorithm doesn't like that. I would maybe cut on, uh, I don't know, uh, some other things. I'm not gonna suggest people firing like anyone from their team. But I would say like in the time of crisis that, you know, maybe if you have like a bigger team, maybe you can like, um, you know, do more things of, on your own at this at this point. But uh, I would definitely not recommend uh, downsizing on, on your PPC team members for sure, because this is what's still going to work. And this is what we're going to be like ranking your products. Um, I would say that you should focus on doing things like in good way, quality no black hat and this is just you know gonna last for another 18 months and whoever survives is going to get out as winner and that's it how long did you say i think about 18 months 18 yeah 18 months since year and since a half from to the starting from today from like i would say yeah pretty much from q3 another year and a half and what are your expectations for Q4 this year? I really have no expectations. It's really like, I think whoever can say anything is just going to be a lot of like, just random talk. And uh, I'm just gonna hope for the best and that's it. I'm just, you know, as I said, my own strategy is sticking to multi-brands, not to Amazon sellers. It's gonna be a very hard time. And uh, the moment recession hits the states is going to be even worse for everyone. US, I think it's US dollar is going to be stronger than Euro. That's also going to be a big problem for us in Europe here as well. But as I said, just prepare for the worst and uh, we'll just take one step at a time. And you know what? We're entrepreneurs. We find solutions and that's what we're going to do. That's it. Any crisis is an opportunity also, right? Exactly. As I said, in every crisis, there were winners that walked out of you know, that, you know, uh, feeling uh, stronger than ever and being stronger than ever. So every crisis is an opportunity. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Wonderful, wonderful. I love your motivation and, <laughs> and wish everybody who watches this video to have the same motivation for this crisis, to be strong. And yes, I mean, in the end. <laughs> we're all in the same boat. We people in e-commerce, we're basically all in the same boat. So, you know, whoever says they're doing a great, uh, they're doing great, they're not, but it's okay. Maybe that's what people say just to make them feel better and get motivated, but <laughs> we're absolutely all in the same boat right now. Okay, wonderful. So thank you very much, Yana. Again, everybody who needs consultation, please, you can see them. Absolutely the, reach out. You can see the email and the contact, the contacts, how to contact Yana. Yeah. Any consultations about fulfillment in Euro, the, the localization of your products, please contact me, contact WAPI. We will help you. And please stay tuned up every Thursday. We have WAPI webinars and a great new material for you. Thank you and wish everybody good luck. Thanks. Good luck, everyone.